Hello and greetings from Iceland. Now is the time when Icelanders pick a new name for a new volcano. But many of you might remember the trouble that the international press had when Eyjafjallajökull erupted in 2010 and nobody could pronounce it. Later it would be Öravajökull that became a tongue twister and the oldest video on the channel is actually about how to pronounce Öravajökull. And now in 2021 we have a new volcano and what should we call it? The latest news is that the good people in Grindavík will choose the name. They will vote for it after suggestions, but Grindavík happens to be the closest town to the volcanic eruption, plagued with the earthquakes for months now, so they deserve it fully to be allowed to name this most recent volcano in Icelandic nature. But that doesn't mean that we can't make any suggestions, so that is what we are going to do now. And there may be even suggestions that you can pronounce even if you are not an Icelander. So let's go over the basics in the language Icelandic. How do we name our landmarks? And the first rules that we have is to relate a new name to the nonsense name that already was there. It's a great excuse. And that is where we are going to start today. I can also say that we are lucky because we have two existing landmarks to work from. And the first one is a mountain where the eruption took place. That mountain is called uh, Mount Fagradalsfjall, Fagradalsfjall. And first I'm going to break it down into units that's uh, easier to chew on. Fagra means beautiful, Dals means valley, and Fjall means mountain. Meaning beautiful valley mountain, and beautiful valley mountain was named after a valley that is called beautiful valley. So it is quite simple after all. Here we have a map and uh, Fagradalsfjall. And when we zoom in, we see that uh, Fagredalur, beautiful valley, is a right here. Not only is it small and narrow, it is ugly. And there we are on a bit strange side of the Icelandic language. Or how correct is the description of our landmarks? Who was it that named this valley as beautiful for all eternity and what was he thinking or her? But anyway, we are stuck with his name. This is what he got and we just have to work from it. So let's move to the second landmark that we can perhaps use in order to create a new name. And again we have a valley that is quite ugly and it has a strange name Geldingadalur. So Geldingadalur, when I translate it to English, the closest word would be castration valley. And now I'm really thinking, is there a castration valley in the US or England? Or were we the first one to invent such a name for a valley? Anyways. In Icelandic, we can say that it can also stand for unfertile, like unfertile animals, but as for horses, they can be castrated. So when I took a look at the history behind the name, I found out that it comes from the fact that a settler there kept the animals there, the castrated ones, or unfertile. So as for Icelandic, this is pretty plain and simple. But it isn't, however, a, what we can say, tourist-friendly name. I would not think so. But I'm not sure though, because uh, a scientist said today in the TV that this eruption was the smallest one ever recorded here in Iceland. And he added that this was just uh, ideal, a tourist volcano, nothing more. Like uh, meet uh, outdoor barbecue for tourists. So there is a kind of connection between the name of the valley and the eruption. I mean, this eruption wasn't that, you know, good. So. Here we are, with uh, two old Icelandic names, two ugly valleys, and one lame eruption, or all we need for a new name in Icelandic. All we have to do is to connect it together the Icelandic way, and that is the easiest part. After all, the Icelandic language allows us to combine many words together into one without breaking any rules, and from that we get names like Valaheiðarvega, Vinnu, Verkvara, Kemslu, Skúra, Útidira, Lekla, Kipur, Ingur, deep word like uh, charged with energy, formed to perfection. So the Icelandic language leaves us with plenty of options to name this volcano. And the first and obvious option would be Fagradalshraun. Fagradalshraun, meaning beautiful valley lava. And hraun as ending for volcanoes or lava field is very common. 
So Faradalshraun is a first idea that I've heard. But then we heard uh, Geldingadalshraun. Geldingadalshraun. And I am trying to be a tourist guide in my mind now and explain this to tourists. Castration valle lava. And I am not sure it's going to work. We can shorten it like uh, Geldingahraun. Skip the valley, but we are still stuck with castration lava. And as I said, I'm not sure about the tourist value, even if the lava fountain turned out to be lame. But in general, those are the two ideas that the Icelandic nation will grab first when it's going to vote about this name. Well, not the nation, the people in Grindel. And now is your chance to have something to say about it as foreigners, perhaps coming to Iceland to visit us. And they really don't want to get one of those uh, tongue twisters, like we haven't got uh, enough of them already. But uh, even so, I'm not sure that Icelanders would uh, listen to it, because uh, they are kind of teasers. And I'm going to admit it fully that uh, it can be fun to listen to foreigners try to pronounce our names. It can be good fun. Cool. I don't know. All now. <laughs> and it's one of the best party tricks that you get in the world. So my own idea for this lava field would be the Icelandic word Tungubrotsrun. Tungubrotsrun. And that means tongue twister lava. And I hope you enjoyed this lesson in Icelandic and Icelandic culture. And I'm sending you all my best from the volcanic island Iceland. Iceland.